Here's a question where we've got a homogeneous equilibrium. Everything's gas in this, in this one. And now I've given, instead of a bunch of equilibrium concentrations, only this. And, and, and you know, if, if you're going to be asked to find K values, generally on a test or something like that, your teacher's always going to ask you, here's a straightforward, here's all the concentrations of equilibrium, plug them in, just like the last example. But then there's always one like this. Initially, not at equilibrium, but initially, we have a concentration of this chemical in a flask of uh, HClO4 gas. And we know that it's going to decompose in this certain situation into H2 gas, Cl2 gas, and oxygen gas, into its elements. Okay, so that's what's going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So initially, we've got a concentration of this, but none of these chemicals here. So when a chemical isn't mentioned in terms of its concentration, you can assume that initially, we've got no moles per liter of any of those guys right there. Now, the reaction is going to start. It's going to take place. So what's going to happen? Well, think about it. We're going to lose some of this chemical here because it's going to start to react and it's going to start to make these. And then once these start to get made, they're going to start to collide. The molecules collide because it's all about collision theory, you see? It's molecules colliding and these guys that are still in this closed system are going to start to react with one another and reform that reactant. And so eventually, we're going to get to equilibrium. But what are the concentrations here going to be? Well, we don't know that, but here's what we're told in this question, okay? That we started off with 0.2 but we end up with 0.1 moles per liter here, 0.100 moles per liter of that chemical. So now the question is, what's the K value? So you don't get intimidated and you go, okay, logic, 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 how do I approach this? Well, we initially had 0.2 and nothing here, but we end up with 0.1 here. And we know that the reaction must actually move toward making some of these chemicals. And so now, here's what you do. You have an initial line, which is why I put an I there. And then we have an equilibrium line here, but in the middle of the two, we have a C for a change line. So here's what we're doing. We are making something called an ice box. That's what it's called, an ice box. And it's a great name. Initial change equilibrium. And what we're going to do in this ice box is we're going to then devise an entire table here of ideas. I always like to write the equation and work underneath it. Uh, and I like to keep that equilibrium arrow there too. That's what I just do. That's what you should do too. Now, take a look. What's going to happen here is we're going to lose from here. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to put a negative in front here. And we're going to gain all of these chemicals here because they were at zero. And at equilibrium, you can't have nothing of something. Because at equilibrium, you have to have something of everything. So therefore, we have to have this reaction shift to making these chemicals right here. And so, these all have to be added to. But we're going to add certain quantities. Now, you're going to say, well, I don't know how much is lost. Well, you kind of do, but we'll get to that in a second. But here's the relationship. Every time this chemical, HClO4 here, loses two of itself, the hydrogens will gain one of itself. Because the equation speaks Molish. So if you've got two here, it'll make one here. If you are going to lose a certain amount here, whatever that amount is, let's say it's X amount, you're going to get half as much here. Does that make sense? Or if you lose two X here, you're going to gain one X there. And now we start to fill it in. And it's really simple, isn't it? We don't know what the quantity is. It's always X. It's always X. It's always X. It's always X. But the x's have coefficients in front, and it's the coefficients of the balanced equation. You're going to lose 2x here, and every time you lose 2x here, you're going to gain, well, just 1x here. So you can put a 1 in front, but I wouldn't. Just put plus x. That's going to be plus x. But every time you lose 2 here, you're going to make how much here? 4 there. So you put a 4 in front of that x. And so every time this loses 2x, you're going to get x here, x here, 4x here, which means this. That at equilibrium here, you are going to have, and what you do is, what you do is this. You take the initial line and add it to the change line. The initial line and add it to the change line. You're going to say, well, there's subtraction there. Yeah, but you're adding a negative, so subtraction. Good. So you're going to add this to this, okay? So what you get is, at equilibrium, 0.200 minus 2x. 
That is what this is at equilibrium. And guess what? We know what this is at equilibrium. That right there is this, 0 decimal 1, 0, 0. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. This is going to, right, 0.2 is going to lose 2x of itself, and it's going to make 0.1 because we're told that in this question. And if that's the situation right there, when you do this math right here, negative 2x equals, and then subtract 0.2 from each side to get negative 0.100. So x is going to be, when you divide by negative 2, you're going to get 0 0.05. And let's say, let's just keep the significant digits at 3. x is 0 0.05, 0, 0. That is what it is, because, you know, obviously, if 2 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.1, you lose that from this, and then you get this. Good, okay. That means then that if we know what the concentration here is at equilibrium, which we do, we now know what x is. And so therefore, guess what we know? We know that this is 0 0.0500. We know that this x is 0 0.0500. And we know that this is 4 times 0.0500. Now, we haven't answered the question yet, because what we've got to do is we have to plug all those numbers into the equilibrium expression. Why? Because we're looking for the k-value. That's the entire question here. What's the k-value? So, there's the expression for this reaction. The concentration of the H2 times the Cl2 times the O2 to the fourth power, right? And it's all divided by the concentration of the reactant, which is the HClO4 squared because of the two in front there. Now, we plug numbers in from what we just calculated. Remember that this at equilibrium right here was 0 0.100 moles per liter, and this was 0 .00, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and 4 times 0 0.05. Look what I did. Here, that times that, because that's 0.05 times 0 0.05, that's squared, right? That's just those two, that's that times that right there. I'm just kind of, look, I'm treating you like you understand what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> And then we're going to take this concentration here, which is 4 times 0 0.05, which is 0 0.2. That number's 0 0.2, right? To the fourth power, because it says to the fourth. Put to the fourth. And then you say, but it's already four times that. Yeah, it's four times that number, which is x, and then to the fourth power. Put it in right. Like that. And then that was 0.1 at equilibrium here, 0.1 moles per liter squared, right there. When you do all of that math right there, to three significant digits, you're going to get, because you started with three significant digits, you got three significant digits there, you're, find, you're finding the k value, keep your three sig digs, you're going to get 4.00 times 10 to the negative 4. Now, by the way, nor did I mention in the last example, but I mentioned here, we just calculated the k value, and it's moles per liter times moles per liter times moles per liter to the fourth divided by moles per liter squared. What's the unit of k? You know, some people get hung up on that and they want you to give a unit. You don't have to, because no scientist worries about that. A k value is going to be, in the end, something that we just don't care about putting a unit in for. Really, because it's just kind of goofy to keep track of it. So the thing is, a k value, we just know that it arrived from, say, in this instance, moles per liter. But k values can come from other places, like pressure equilibria, too. We'll talk about that right now.